All right, good morning, class, and welcome to week number three. That is right, week number three of your 7314 class, which is your reference class. As always, I'm your professor, Dr. Jace K. Austin. And what we are going to do today is we are going to have a state of the course update, as always. And then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about two common APA mistakes. Um, and there are, you probably want to pay attention to this. There are two APA uh, two APA mistakes that are very common, and those APA mistakes deal with capitalization of certain parts of the APA citation, and then also there is very commonly an issue of people failing to initialize given names of authors when they're doing APA. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. Now, the reason why I am, um, you all probably do want to pay attention to this as well. So there are two assignments that I use to gauge whether or not you can pick up on learning a citation style. And those two assignments are the two formal essay assignments, which are the virtual reference practice paper and the Wikipedia edit assignment. Both of those papers are formal essay style papers. And because of that, I will be using those to check whether or not you can learn a citation style. OK, um, there are some other places where APA can be used in the class. You can certainly use APA for the semester long project when those questions, uh, there are some questions they ask you to provide a citation and those questions they ask you to provide the citation, you will provide an APA citation. Uh, however, I will not be grading um, for APA correctness on the semester long project. The project itself is stressful enough that you don't need that added pressure. And then in your discussion boards, I do prefer that you use APA uh, in your discussion boards if you're citing sources, but I don't, uh, because the discussions are more informal, in my opinion, I don't actually check those for APA accuracy. So you will need to use APA accurately for, again, the um, the virtual reference practice paper and the Wikipedia edit assignment. So keep that in mind. Uh, but before we even dive into that, I am going to talk a little bit about the state of the course, uh, which is pretty good. Um, and then for those of you who have had me before, you've heard the APA spiel before. So I will let you know when I'm going into the APA spiel and I will tell those of you who don't think you need it, you can go ahead and cut the video off now. All right. By the way, you can speed these videos up. I hope you've been doing that. All right, so let's get into the state of the course update. I am gonna pause. All right, so let's get into the state of the course updates. First of all, what you've got coming due. Uh, you will have coming due uh, on September the 11th, which is this coming Sunday. You will have discussion uh, number two coming due. For those of you who uh, paid attention, yes, the uh, the discussion board number two that actually spans across two weeks. OK, so uh, you started that during week two and you're completing it here in week three, and I will actually grade those after they are completed uh, on Sunday. So uh, make sure that if you have not completed both parts of, because uh, discussion number two is two part. And so just make sure that if you have not finished the second part that you go ahead and um, as it says here, please note that you should have at least one post up by September the 4th and you should have your follow up post up by the end of week three, which is uh, September the 11th. So, um, yeah, I am. And I'm probably also going to, since this is dealing with the information seeking behavior, uh, one of my friends actually, he uh, did like a little tweet thread about the information seeking behavior of Doja Cat in one of her songs. And it's it got pretty popular on uh, on Twitter. So I'm actually probably going to upload that as a uh, as an announcement in the course. So there's that. Um, but yes, uh, the information seeking behavior thing, that's one of the most uh, that's probably as deep as we're really, really going to get into the theoretical side of things. And then from there on, I try to keep it mostly uh, at practice. And there are some theory, uh, there is some theory that's more related to uh, cust uh, customer interaction or user or patron, excuse me, I'm sorry, interaction, however you want to term that. Uh, but again, I will, um, excuse me. The things that we talk about related to uh, customer interaction, like the theory behind um, conducting a proper reference interview and things like that, I still feel that those things are like super, super practical. Whereas, you know, in your day to day on the desk, uh, in your day to day on the reference desk type job, you are going to be uh, putting your uh, your theoretical knowledge of the reference interview and some other things to practice a lot. But when it comes to information seeking behavior, you're not really going to be thinking about, OK, uh, the sense making model says this. And I got to keep that in mind as I answer this reference question. It doesn't really work that way. Whereas you will, again, um, when you're on the desk, you will be thinking, OK, I have to 
conduct a reference interview this way based on the theory. So those are kind of different, but uh, these two weeks that we're doing the information seeking theory, um, yeah, I, I, I think that that's as, uh, as deep as we get into theory that doesn't have a very obvious practical uh, application. So that is what it is. If you love theory, then these will probably be the best two weeks of the class. Um, but hopefully you all will also enjoy uh, learning various things related to practice. So there's that. So make sure you uh, make sure you have actually two posts um, in discussion board number two. And also please have a reply to at least one of your classmates. Um, so this should be a total of three posts. Now, you also this weekend have coming due the... Come on, buddy. All right, I don't know why that was so slow. You do also have the database unassignment that's coming due on September the 11th at 11.59 p.m. Central Time. Uh, and this is, and I see quite a few of you have already done this. It looks like about seven of you have already done it. You have been assigned databases. Um, so go ahead, find your name and work uh, doing, uh, use this, excuse me, use this format to actually uh, complete the assignment. Just again, take the bold, copy and paste and uh, replace what's not bolded, the information that is that I have that's specific to cables here. Um, you're gonna wanna replace that unbolded information with the information that is accurate to your database. And as you will see, uh, your classmates who have already completed this assignment, they have already done this. So you already know what to do based on your classmates uh, doing it and doing it sufficiently and appropriately. And so if you do the same, that should be a relatively easy five points to get. All right. So, yes, get those database unassignments in this weekend. Finish that discussion board post this weekend. And uh, if you do those things, you will be golden. Uh, after you finish your stuff that's due on September the 11th, my advice to you would be to go ahead and if you haven't done so already, get in touch with your virtual reference uh, practice partner and work on a time that you all can meet and then get that assignment done and turned in. That uh, The hardest thing really with that assignment probably is actually scheduling and meeting and deciding what media you're going to use and what platforms you're going to use in order to communicate with each other. But once you get that down pat, you know, that that assignment isn't going to be too terribly uh, grueling or anything like that. I think you guys will have a good handle on that. Uh, the Wikipedia edit assignment also I don't think is going to be too much of a challenge, even though if you haven't edited Wikipedia before, there will be a little bit of a learning curve there just to figure out how to edit. Uh, the LibGuide is where people really start to get a bit of a challenge from the course and then of course the semester long project that you'll be working on uh, that I hope to have up by the end of week four. Um, Again, that assignment also, it takes some time and it will probably test your patience a little bit, but that's why it's spread out throughout the course of the semester instead of just being a two-week project like it was prior to me inheriting this course. So you can spread that out. Again, once I make it live in week, uh, at the end of week four is where I'm targeting. Generally, if you do uh, six to seven questions a week, you'll be finished in plenty of time and you won't be feeling stressed out or overwhelmed on it, okay? Um, by the way, if you have any issues related to uh, using one of the databases, like if one of the databases isn't working when you're doing the semester long project, uh, my advice to you would be to reach out to Kimberly Muller. A lot of people reach out to me. You can reach out to me, that's fine, but Kimberly Muller, uh, our librarian for the library science uh, program, she is really the one who stays uh, on top of troubleshooting these databases and things like that. So when there's an issue, she is probably going to be able to get you an answer much, much quicker than I would be able to. All right, so that is pretty much what I've got going on there as far as state of the course updates. You don't really need anything else on that. So at this time, I think what I will do is I will, uh, well, first of all, I will welcome those who, um, those of you who have already heard my spiel on APA, you can go ahead and take off. There's no need for you to stick around and hear this again. But for those of you who have not heard, had me before or did not watch an APA video uh, when I did this class before, you do probably want to take a look at this unless you already know APA inside and out. Because I've had people overestimate their confidence in their uh, abilities or their confidence in knowing APA, and they didn't know it quite as well as they thought they did. So let's go ahead and... 
um, take a look at APN. I'm going to show you those two common mistakes, okay? Okay, so first of all, uh, just to let you know, I don't require that you buy the APA uh, style manual, especially if you have access to a library. Your library probably already has a copy of the APA style manual, and so I don't make that a required uh, course material for any of my classes because, A, you probably have access to it at a library if you work at a library or li live near one, and then B, um, you know, the uh, I think the, the Purdue Owl actually suffices. You can do anything you need to do for my classes. I can't speak for other professors, but for my classes, yes, anything that you need to do APA-wise, you can learn how to do it from the Purdue Owl, so there's no need for you to actually buy the style guide. So I'm trying to look out for your pockets a little bit. Um, the money that you would have spent on a style guide, you can go ahead and spend that on something else, please do. Uh, ooh, I've got a restart message. Hold on, let me get rid of that. All right, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, we tend to have to restart our computers a lot for the University of Missouri. That just how that is how it is. That's how they keep our computers looking great and up and functional and running and all of that stuff. So first of all, if you have never heard of the Purdue Owl, the Purdue Owl is a free over the web um, citation guide that you can use. It's probably the most useful and most reliable one. Uh, I also think it's probably the most popular one. It is produced by uh, Purdue University, so we're not talking about some a random guy in his basement or anything like that. This is actually a, I think Purdue is a research one institution. I don't know if they're AAU, but they are definitely a research one institution. Um, so, you know, they're no slouches and they are trying to do things right. So if you don't know how to get to the APA, uh, uh, to the Purdue Owl, it's very simple to get there because all you really need to do is do uh, a Google search for Purdue Owl a APA. Once you do that, you will be brought here. And so this gives you this overview page. I'm actually not going to go into a bunch of details with the overview page. You can read that yourself if you want. I'm just going to be talking about the two mistakes that I see students make over and over again. And even if I warn them, don't do this. Uh, and I assure you, uh, at least one of you is going to do it this semester because it happens every single time. I will tell you, I am looking to see if you initialize given names for authors. And I am looking to see if you are doing the capitalization appropriately. And even when I say I'm looking for it, I'm going to count off if you don't do it right, people still don't do it right. They overestimate their um, their abilities and that leads to them losing points. So having said that, we are going to get into it and I'm going to show you again those two common mistakes. All right. So first of all, let's uh, and we can actually for the name initializing, we don't even really need to look at a bunch of these. We only probably really need to only look at one, and that's, uh, the, oh, we don't want the in-text. So by the way, what I'm showing you all is for the reference list, not for the in-text. Uh, so for the in-text, you probably all already know how to do that. It's not that difficult. Uh, and if you don't know how to do it, yes, use the Purdue Owl, and it'll explain it. You have these uh, in-text uh, guys right here. But what I'm talking about is the reference list. This is specifically what I'm talking about, the reference list. Okay, so for the reference, uh, ah, okay, so for the reference list, what we want to do is we want to um, scroll down here. So some things that you want to, again, keep in mind, basic rules for Oh, well, basic rules for most sources. That's what I'm looking for. You might want to look at all the basic rules, but again, I'm going to focus on the two common mistakes. Authors' first and middle names must be written as initials. This is a very common mistake. So even if you know that somebody's name is Jan, uh, Jane Marie Smith, you would not write Smith, comma, Jane Marie. You would write Smith, comma, J, period, space, M, period. And that is a mistake that I see made over and over again. People just assume that if they have the first and middle name, that they go ahead and throw that in there fully, and that if they're using initials, I think people assume that if initials are being used, it's because initials are all that were available, but that's not the case. APA actually requires that you, for your reference list, you uh, just use the initials for first and middle names. I will be checking for this. This is one of those two common mistakes I was talking about. So if you uh, if you write out names in a reference list, I'm going to count off and I'm going to tell you. I warned you about that. All right, and I'm going to tell you to go ahead and watch the video if you didn't watch it. And if you did watch it, I'm going to tell you to rewatch it. Okay, so that's how that goes. Make sure first and middle names are initialized. Okay, 
All right, so the second thing that we're going to talk about that is that capitalization. So uh, again, we have some uh, basic rules for most sources, and you'll see it here, but I will go into some sample citations and actually show this uh, more clearly. Uh, but basic rules, and people get this, again, wrong all of the time. When re referring to the titles of books, chapters, articles, reports, website, uh, web pages, I'm sorry, or other sources, capitalize only the first letter of the first word in the title and subtitle in the first word after a colon or a dash in the title and proper nouns. Note again that titles of academic journals are subject to special rules and see the subject below. So, I mean, see the section below, Lord, me and my reading. Um, when I'm trying to talk fast, I start talking before I read, and that is why that is happening. But yes, so again, let's look at this. When referring to the titles of books, chapters, articles, reports, web pages, and most other sources, capitalize only the first letter of the first word the first of the title, uh, the first letter of the first word of the subtitle, and also proper nouns. Also, uh, this comes into play a lot less, but the first word after a colon or a dash in a title. That comes, again, into play a lot less, but definitely uh, capitalize that first word of the title, the first word of the subtitle, and all proper nouns. And again, if we scroll down here, we will see that there's a special sort of thing going on when you are dealing with academic journals. This also really kind of applies to uh, magazine and newspaper articles as well. So I would keep that in mind for those two. Uh, basically, it's for periodicals. But yes, um, capitalize all major words in the titles of journals. But then, and that, again, that's the titles of journals. Keep that in mind. But when you get to the article title, not the journal title, and I'm going to drive that home, the article title, not the journal title. When you get to the article title, you have that same rule applied. For the article title, you capitalize the first word of the title, the first word of the subtitle, and uh, any proper nouns. And then also, again, this comes up a lot less, but the first word after a colon or a dash. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like in action. First, we are going to look at the uh, the periodicals, the academic journals and stuff like that, um, so that we can see what they're talking about there, because that's a little more confusing than what you're seeing elsewhere. So as you can see here in this uh, format sample, you can see that the for the title of the article, they have only the word title capitalized, whereas for title of periodical, they have title and periodical capitalized. So let's go ahead and look at some, let's look at some examples so that we can really, really see this in action. So, and again, as you can see, uh, these names here, uh, the given names, the first name and middle names, they are, are, they are initialized. They are not written out fully. So again, keep that in mind. But yes, when you are, when you have the article title, the article title for a academic journal, as well as a uh, magazine or newspaper, the article title will not be capitalized, I mean capitalized, the article title will not be italicized, sorry, but the journal title or the periodical title will be italicized. So you see here, this is the journal title, Purdue Journal of Self uh, Service Learning and International Engagement. So you see there that this journal title is italicized, but this is the article title and it's not. Data and experience design, that is the title and then the subtitle, negotiating community-oriented digital research with service learning. So as you can see, again, pay close attention. Capitalized, not capitalized, not capitalized. So in the main title, data and experience design, only data is capitalized. In the subtitle, Negotiating Community-Oriented Digital Research with Service Learning. Negotiating is the only word that is capitalized. Community-Oriented, not capitalized. Digital, not capitalized. Research, not capitalized. Service Learning, not capitalized. And then you do see that when you get to the journal title, you do have all of those words capitalized. Um, so yes, you have to abide by that. And then also for our, um, for our proper nouns, uh, Oh, I don't see it. It must be in one of the other ones. But uh, for the proper nouns, actually, let's see if we can. Let's go in the books. It might have been a book thing. So as you can see with your basic format, when you're not dealing with periodicals, when you're dealing with other sources like books and reports and all of those things, then you don't have to worry about dealing with an um, in 
you don't have to deal with the publication title that's different from the article title, but at the same time, in this case, the publication title takes on that weird capitalization scheme. So as you can see here, this is the format title of work. Uh, work is not capitalized, just title. And then after the colon, the subtitle for C is capitalized, but letter also and subtitle, those are lowercase. And so when you see an example here, the reason, there we go. The reason why Alexander the Great has great capitalized as well is because that actually is the proper noun, is Alexander the Great, not just Alexander. So you do capitalize great in this case, but um, you see that proper noun is capitalized, but after the colon, the subtitle, a life and legend, only a is capitalized. And then life, legend, those are lowercase. And if we scroll down, we'll see some similar stuff going on here. Uh, got our editors to this work here a new companion to Mallory this is the title of the book and new and companion are lowercase but a because that's the first word of the title is capitalized and then Mallory because that's a proper noun is capitalized so that is how that works it does work a little differently and I am going to include a little bit of the, well a little bit of I am going to include an attachment uh, that talks about APA capitalization a little more in depth. I'm going to include that uh, in this announcement when I put this uh, video into the announcement section of the class. So keep that in mind. But yes, so these are two very common mistakes, and I will be counting off if you get these things wrong on the uh, on the virtual reference practice assignment and on the um, excuse me Wikipedia edit assignment. Get these things right, make sure you got them right, make sure you do it properly, and that is how we all go home happy. So with that said, um, I don't think there's anything else, and I am over 20 minutes, so let's go ahead and close it out. I am Dr. Jace, and not providing the best service to your library users is a big disgrace, so don't do that. I am Dr. Jace, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.